Welcome back to the Music Hacks Network. I am your host, Chris Bailey. Today we are joined by two great keyboard players. Jermaine Biggie Francis, who was here with us in an interview a couple of weeks ago. And we are joined by Jermaine Johnson. Both of these guys, they play it with the same band. We are going to hear from them at this time. Gentlemen, welcome to the Music Hacks Network. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. Ah, guys, uh, this interview um, sets up to be a great one. Okay, um, we have had the opportunity of hearing from, from Biggie a couple of weeks ago, as I said. Um, so I'm just going to ask him just to hold on a, a minute, and then well, we're going to hear from Jermaine Johnson. All right. Yes, sir. Jermaine, you have been my friend for many years. Years, years. Yeah, man. We have actually done a lot of gigs Together, and yeah, shared the, the same stage. That's right. That's right. Yes. That's right. But for informational purposes, I'm going to ask you to tell the viewers a little information about Jermaine Johnson. Um, well, Jermaine Johnson is. Uh, a quiet person like I'm always in my shell until I go on stage um, you would see a different side to me um, I started doing music from I was in in primary school and I fell in love with it from then going to high school I joined the school choir right out of high school I joined a band um, called Dimensions um, we used to roll around people like step by step so they were persons that helped to groom me when it comes to reggae music because you know growing up in the church church playing music in church and playing reggae music is totally different understand there, 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 there are disciplines to reggae music that we have to we have to actually study understand so Jermaine is just a quiet person who loves to play music and love what he does. Okay, Jermaine, I would like to know some of the persons who have influenced your, your love for this instrument. Um, what, well, some of the persons, I would say Jamal. Um, he's a really good keyboard player. Um, Persons in my in my surrounding too, like like um I don't know if you guys know Sefu. He was one of them that that we used to link up together and learn from each other. So he's a really good keyboard player. He influenced me a lot too. And um and Richard Spencer, he's a he's a really good musician too. So those are like a few of them, a few of the keyboard players that really really. I listen to and I, I put together what they teach me or whatever, or whatever they show me. I put them together and make my song. Okay, cool. And uh, I, I am quite happy because a lot of persons who have been on this program so far, they are making mention of some of the, the, the players that are from, from Jamaica. They are local players. They are yes. players who are living in the same communities and that is absolutely awesome for me so many times uh, musicians talk about persons who are overseas or they give credit to persons who are overseas and sort of forget the persons who have contributed locally that is very good um Jermaine. right yeah all right um how, how would you describe um your style of play Jermaine? I, I I really don't think I have a specific style of playing. I would, if I should put something to it, it would be like a fusion between um, souls and and reggae. Who are some of the persons that that you have worked with? Um, I've worked with a few persons. I've worked with 
persons like Marcia Griffiths of um, Papa Son, um, Sister Pat. Yeah, a few persons off the bat. Just thinking off the top of my head right now. All right, but you know, you have mentioned playing with Papa Son. You know that's that um, that experience would have been envied by many musicians. Really? Yes, man. <laughs> I, I, I must it was, say, it, yeah? it was it was a it was a good experience. He's he's a he's a he's a good person to work with. I, I personally don't have a problem with working with him. Mm. Um, he's he's fun to work with on stage. When I say fun, like all the shows that you go to, it's always like, like the vibe is always up there, the energy on stage, and and this this is this goes back to show like a lot of a lot of artists don't understand the energy you have between you and your musician is very important because it will it will the energy that you have will 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 you will feed the crowd the energy and you will get back the same energy from the crowd, so it's like. Yeah, he's a good person to work with. Okay. I enjoy working with him. So in terms of pre preparation, how would you prepare for a, a, a gig or a show with, with, with Papa Sam? Um, first, I would be listening to the songs for, for, for weeks before even touching my keyboard. And then I'll... I'll start like jotting down notes, which um, if I want to split up my keyboard, how would, how I would go about doing it. So that's that's the first couple of steps that I'll make. First, I'll start listening to the songs because listening is key. And like even going into like phrase line and stuff like that, like I I would sing individual phrase lines to myself and then and then I apply it to the keyboard. There's no added pressure to, to play with a, a, an artist of, of this um, caliber. Um, to be honest, it, it, I wouldn't say pressure. I would say more excitement. Mm -hmm. Like, like I'm, I would be like persons would ask me, "Are you nervous before you you play a show or whatever?" And I I would say no. It, it would be more like excited to like to like um, see the, the like the people feeling our energy on stage then. In terms of plans um, for the future, Jermaine, what sort of plans do you have for your music career? Um, I'm leaning more towards production right now. Um, and I am a person like this. I love to go. I always tell people I like to go with the wind wherever God leads me, I'll follow. So. I think I think I'm leaning towards production right now. Awesome, awesome. Especially like how we we have um, this pandemic um, working from a studio would, would sort of be the ideal thing. That's right. <laughs> it has been it has been rough, um, but I am to be honest. God has been good. Like I didn't ever like go a day without say, oh, I don't have dinner on my table or whatever. You understand? So mm -hmm. God still provides. So I'm still grateful. You understand? Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Um, Jer Jermaine, I I I'm going to take you out of the the hot seat. <laughs> <What? laughs> no, very hot seat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, so we're going to be joined by the other German, German, German Francis. German would have been much more comfortable on the on, on the show because he has been here before and he did an excellent job. All right, but but guys, you, I understand from my research that I did before this interview that both of you currently play for the same band. All right. Right. Yeah. Um, but before we uh, move to the, to this band, we've been playing together before, you know, from right. Jamaica with with Code yeah. Five band. So I've heard a lot about you. <laughs> 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 just me. Just me. 
trust me, working working with 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 Biggie is like it's like uh, I would be his, his fourth hand. I would be two hands for him. He would be two hands for me. Working with him is so easy. Okay. Uh, yeah. I love. I love. I enjoy working with Jimmy. So there has been some form of chemistry from from way back then. From way back then. Yeah, man. From the show that I was telling you about, you know, in, in my um um interview in 2010, that that show that was um kept in Mandeville, mm -hmm. and I told her that they put the band together. So Jermaine was the other keyboard player, you know. So the oh, band was Exodus at the time to do that show. And the band only put together for that show as I was explaining to you. Okay. So after the show, no, they, they said, no, we can't, we can, you know, this band, this thing is a good team. So it's, right. it's um, Exodus to now, to Code 5 now. So me and Jeremy now were together from 2010. Whoa. And we started music school before we left Jamaica, too, but we didn't finish. And we were going to the same music school in the same class sleeping in the same room, everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we have a lot of chemistry. Music, you know? that? Cole's music in, in um, Kingston. Cole's yeah. music. Yeah. yeah. Very good music school. A lot of people don't know about that music school, but that is a very good music school. No, yeah, the the, teacher, uh, yes, German? The teachers there, they are great. They yeah, are great. I, I, I always thought that there is only one music school in Kingston, that's um, the Edna Manley. I'm man oh. calls music school and, and, and they know. Okay. So it's not a well popular school in terms of like Edna Manley, but mm -hmm. it's a very good school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. So both of you are now overseas. Both of you migrated. Yeah. And you, 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 you still found a way to, to be collaborating. Yeah, <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. All right. So, um, tell me something about the, the the band that you you currently play for. So, so, so the band now. I was playing in the band before Germany, you know, because I migrated before Germany. You know? Mm -hmm. you know, so when Germany come um, came here, I think oh go, I think Salah Salah was here at the time, our guitar player. No, I think no, I think when I'm, the drummer for the band. The drummer for the band, Jeremy, you know that drummer well too, you know. The drummer that play for our band now. Okay. So Jeremy yeah. called me and told me he's in town and he's going to come to one of, the, one, of, one of my gigs and stuff and he's going to roll with the drummer. You know, so when he come around us now and introduce him to the people, to, to, the, to the, the owner of the band and things like that, everything just fall into place. I didn't have to do much talking in terms of getting him into the band. Everything, right. just coming around, everything just fall in place. You know? Okay. And I call him on stage to play two songs and stuff like that, so... You know, so everything just fell in pieces. It wasn't too much talking, you know. Everything just worked out together for good, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah. And if I know you well, um, Biggie, I know you would have gotten him into that band. Yeah, man. Even if they yeah. need to know, they might, they might have to say yes. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't stop. <laughs> the more, the more sweet, man. The more sweet. Yeah, man. That's why. That's why. <laughs> Yeah, man. I'm in love looking out for people, you know? Yes, man. Yeah, always. Man. He's a guy who's always looking out for always. his fellow musicians. Yeah, man. Always, yeah, man. All right. So, so Jam Movement Band. Um, yeah. You played on stage. He, he made a decision to stay with the band. All right. So, um, from, from that day, what has been um, each of you, your, your role? In the band. You want you want talk on that journey? Oh. You want me to? We can I, I can talk. Like basically, we're just two keyboard players that work good together. Like if we get new songs sent out in the chat, like we'd be on the phone. We don't we don't really rehearse. We'll be on the phone. All right, Jeremy, and you take this. I'll take this. Or he will call me and say, Jeremy, and you take this, and I'll take this. And I'll be like, okay. We study our part, we can go on the show and we'll play it the same way. Without making any mistakes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, what sort of genre does it that the band mostly focus on? You know that reggae. band, <laughs> reggae music. You know, but you see that band. No, that band is a versatile band. You know, probably one of the most versatile band cover, but cover because it's a they have original songs. You know, but it's mainly cover. 
So I think that band is probably one of the most versatile cover band I ever worked with in terms of genre music because they do R&B, they do top 40, they do Calypso, they do everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so playing yeah. in that band is that like playing in that band and you can play reggae good, you better make sure you can play R&B good too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because the lead singer, the lead singer, she's American, you know, she might sound Jamaican, but she's American. So they do a lot of, a lot of R&B and top 40 music. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, so, um, Jermaine Johnson, what, what's the reception in terms of the, the patrons? Um, the, the patrons, everywhere we go, like, when well, most of the places we go, they love us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, me and Jermaine, we try to be as detailed as possible. Although drum and bass really carry reggae, but we try to be as detailed as possible when it comes to phrase line and and like playing back the songs them um, as how they're, they're on CD. Mm-hmm. Understand? So once they hear the song, they'll recognize it and they'll like start jumping or whatever because we try to play back the songs just as they are. All right. Um, so how important is it to, to play back a tune as how it is already uh, recorded? Because I know some musicians like to add things to, you know, add their flavor to a, a track, right? How important is it to maintain the originality of, of a tune when you are on stage performing it? It is very, very, very important. I think it's disrespectful to like, I'm, I'm not going to say you can't add certain little flavors and little hits and whatever, but I think it's very disrespectful if if you hear a song and, and, and play a completely different thing, it's very disrespectful to, to our ancestors. Yeah, understand? If they, especially all the reggae music, I love, I love to hear the, the stuff play back in the, in, in the music, you understand? Mm-hmm. Play back the phrase line, like how they're supposed to play. So, okay. yeah, it's very okay. important. Very, very important. But um, you, want, you, you, mean, you, you mentioned, yeah. You mentioned something a while ago about um, some musicians love to add their stuff, but you have some musicians adding stuff to something that they don't even know because they don't even catch the song properly and adding stuff. Yeah. So the thing is, is to make sure so you know the thing, you know, properly, and then now you can do a little outside or you whatever you do to the song. Okay. You understand? Or you can hit them here and there, but in terms of the Playing is playing the song itself. Make sure it's a record they are playing, man. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right, um, guys. What we're gonna do now? Um, we're going to allow you to show us how you would actually dissect a, a, a tune and add your individual parts during right. the during the practice or rehearsal um, time before performance. All right. All right, so there's this song. Um, in in the in the in my interview, I was explaining the jap leaf rhythm to you. So the first time we get that um, rhythm to work out, me and Jeremy on the phone. I'm Jeremy, sorry, I'm gonna take this. You take this. I take this. So probably that song we can demonstrate when we play in that. I mean, if Jeremy set up fully, can do it, but. Me can demonstrate or me play. Me and him can play at once and we demonstrate how we approach a song there. And the first time we play this together is just on the show, no rehearsal. Okay. It was just on the show, you know? Just talking over the phone and say, okay, I'm going to take this and you take that. Right. You know? And then drum and bass player, they always do their homework too, so, you know? So mm-hmm. most of the age of movement playing, I think we do some serious rehearsal. Sometimes we don't rehearse for months. Right. So some serious homework, you know. Yeah, Jeremy. So um, Jap Leaf, you can play the the, the guitar, the guitar part. Then I mean, you well, know. um, I don't think I have a guitar set up for this. So, but let me see. Thank 
So that's that's like the guitar sound um, for the intro. We don't have a guitarist, so I would have to take that sound. You understand for the intro, and then I would switch to banging and playing the guitar sound at the same time. I don't have that set up right now, but I still can demonstrate it. So that's basically the intro. The, um, so yeah, so all of that you see right there, the intro and that right there is German part. Yes, that it would take in that in that song. Mm -hmm. So what what I would play over that now I will play this. So you put all of that together. Okay. So we're going, we're going to do another song, um, "Promised Land" by Dennis Brown. Um, I'll be playing the phrase line. German will be um, German Biggie Francis will be doing the bang and bubble. So that's basically the phrase line for Promised Land. Jeremy will be doing the bang and bubble. And the, the bang and bubble will go like this. So that would be the bang and bubble. So I'll take the bang and bubble in that song, Jeremy will take the hands line. So, um, so this song, this song also have a bridge, you know, so most of, most of the time we, we dub the bridge like. And dub the, dub the, dub the, dub the, dub the, um, the bridge. Um, you know? that, that technique that you use, you just used a while ago, um, Biggie. Um, is there a specific name for that technique? You're talking about the, 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 the when I go into the um, dub section? Yeah, that, that sort of echoing um, effect that you have on Okay, there. it's just a, it's just an effect with a, it's just a delay you now. So like you call it, probably them call it fade out. Because I, I realize that that is, that is very, very, um, it repeats itself in many uh, yeah. Reggae tunes. Yeah. All right. Okay, cool. All right, guys, that, that, that is awesome. Awesome work there. All right. Yes, um, now, do you do you guys use um, any stems? I realize you, you have your, your 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 laptops and your, your setup. When yeah. You, uh, I mean, do do you use any stems to enhance your performance? Mostly in the dance hall and the calypso. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the dance hall, like like duali rhythm and those rhythm. Oh. You know. I use it. I use this stem. So, you know, what, and, what what would your what would your stem um be comprised of? What would you have on the stem as to what you're playing um on your board? I would have um like some tracks from the drums. Some tracks. I wouldn't have the full stem like the, like the bass playing and all of that. Mm. I would like have certain little things like like certain percussion sounds and probably some keyboard sounds. Yeah. In the stems, but the, but the heavy part of it, the heavy part of it, like the drum and the bass, I wouldn't have that in the stem. Okay, yeah. and we yeah. take we take like the major parts. So, so for example, if something goes wrong on stage with the with the stems, like we still would sound full, right? So we'd still would still play play like the major parts in there. Okay. Some people, right. some persons would be lazy and just let like the stems like play most of the whatever, but we mm. don't do it like that. We don't do it like that, no. So if the stems, sh something should go wrong, as German said, we you know we still sound full. Yeah. All right. So so it's it's a, a word of caution to the, the persons who are relying totally on stems to make learn sure the to, to know the song. Yeah, man, learn the parts, man. Learn the parts. Learn the part. Yeah. <laughs> learn the parts. <laughs> it's very important to learn the parts. And sometimes, um, the technology. 
um, mm-hmm. um, defeats us or right. uh, our technology fails us. Right. And it's it's a train wreck after that because if you don't know the parts and performing on stage, right, right, right. And, the, and the technology fails, then oh boy. So right. no right. part is is essential. Very. Okay, Jermaine Johnson. I've watched a, a few of um, the, the clips of mm-hmm. your band performing, and I I realized that you were doing some amount of vocals while on stage. <laughs> well, I'm, I wouldn't call myself a singer, you know. I would say that I can hold a few notes, because um, basically what what happened with that is. Um, they heard me do some a little bit of background one at a time, and they were like, okay, so you get in the mic, and you're going to start singing. <laughs> okay. So I didn't fight it. I didn't really fight it. I wanted to because you know, you know, you know, I'm not this person who just, like, be up front. I'll be, I'll be, like, doing a bunch of stuff when I'm behind the keyboard, but, like, if I'm supposed to go up front and start singing, I'm, I'm a really shy person. Mm-hmm. But... After doing it for a certain, for, for a good little minute now, I'm starting to get a little bit comfortable with, mm-hmm. with, with, with singing. Um, I'm getting a little bit more confident. Um, I guess by practicing over and over um, how to hit this note and whatever, how to breathe through this note, um, I'm, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable doing it. Okay. I usually sing when I was much smaller um when i was a child i shouldn't say much smaller when i was a child i usually i usually do a little bit of singing but i, I put it down and i started playing just playing so I'd, I'd stop singing for a good little minute okay but yeah but but how do you multitask because i i try to sing and play my instrument and it it has never materialized you know i, I just can't concentrate and and both things at the same time. I don't know if singing and playing bass is more difficult than play than singing and playing keyboards. But how do you multitask? I, 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 w- I would say singing and playing bass would be more difficult. Mm. But um, according to, to the bass player for, for the band, he, he's saying that my my what I'm doing is more difficult, but I don't believe that. Um, Sometimes I'll, I'll like, I think it's practice, but, but I don't really practice a lot when it comes to like, like bubble and, and phrase and sing. Cause sometimes Biggie, Biggie will be um, banging, I'll be um, bubbling with my left hand and phrasing with my right hand and singing at the same time, doing backgrounds or, or lead vocals. Um, I think it's years of, of practicing how to develop your independence and do three things at once. Okay. Okay, cool. I will definitely have to try that on my instrument, but I, I don't know if that, that is going to be achieved. But um, hats yeah. off to you, man, for singing and playing at the same time. Yeah, man, respect, respect. All right. Okay, guys, I'm answering this question to both of you. Um, what would you say to... Uh, a, a musician who is just coming up who would like to um, go into music full time, right? Forget about a nine to five. How would you encourage that person? Well, um, well, I've been doing music full time since um, age seventeen. One time ever try to record a restaurant and I never record. <laughs> yeah, when, when, no, when, when, I, when I came here, I was working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you're a restaurant, man? Yeah, man. I didn't know you could cook. A, a big chef, you know? Is a yeah, big chef? Man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, you can I, cook, man. Yeah, man. And, and that big cook, man, you yeah, lick a ten finger in my tent. Too. Yeah, man. And when I... You can cook, man. Mm-hmm. And when, when I came here, no, I was working at UPS for a little while. Okay. Yeah, so but I always I always do um full time music. But the thing with doing full time, if you want to make it as a musician, you have to be really serious or serious in every way. Mm-hmm. You know, in every way, like because as Mr. Le, for me, when the music really gets serious for me you now is when we really start playing like RB, you know. 
So what I'm saying now, I'm saying, yeah, yeah, yeah I would encourage, you know, a younger musician to, if, if they want to do it, if that's what they want to do, they can do it, but take it serious in every way in terms of, you know, playing that music the correct way. You know, reggae is a very powerful music, you know, very, very powerful music all over the world. There is no country in this world that don't accept reggae music. Mm -hmm. You know, reggae music is a, there is no Maria Carey, no Selenia, nobody that eat a chart that reggae music don't eat. You know, so reggae music is a, is a very powerful music. So I would say if you're going to do music full time and you're going to play reggae music, put your heart and your soul in it, man, and, and, and do it correctly. You know, listen and do it correct. Yeah. To add to what, what, what Jermaine is saying, like a lot, of, a lot of musicians from Jamaica, um, from our region, don't really take reggae music serious. They might feel like they're playing the right, the right thing. They might be playing the right chords or whatever, but the feel is not there. And reggae music is not a, about just laying down some chords. Like you have to have the feel as well. And it's something that can be learned if you listen properly. You understand? And listening is the first part of... Um, playing music, not only reggae music, but listening is the first part of playing music. Okay. So um, <laughs> uh, a young musician coming up can basically survive from, from doing gigs. Right. Take care of family you, and, um, you know. If you have the principle, because if you don't have the principle, nobody now call it for it for them. Mm. Right. So if you have the principle, you know, like, you have enough musicians and artists now call them to play for them because they now play about the thing the right way. So you have to be a musician where all right, take for instance, like me now. When I used to play for um when I used to play for Diane Barnett, because I used to play for Diane Barnett at one point. She used to tell me, you know what, what I love about you? You play about the stuff the right way, you have very good memory, and you learn quick. You understand? So all of them stuff there. Music and not only technical skill alone, the artists them look because they can have technical skill and they don't use you. Because if you take and learn a man show, they're not gonna use you. If you can't remember a man show, they're not gonna use you. So no matter how technical you be, you still have to have them thing there too. If you don't have those stuff like learning a man show quick, you can't remember stuff. You understand? And don't have to depend on listen all the time, like your brain your work, you know. So if you don't have them stuff that people, you know, artists not gonna use it either. So I will put it will put the stuff my have you know, take into consideration. All right, guys. Um, this has been a, a very, very productive interview. It was very good that you guys could have joined me in the studios of the Music Hacks Network. Uh, we have already had um the information in terms of contact for for Jeremy and Biggie Francis. I'm going to ask Jermaine Johnson now to just to give um, the viewers and subscribers his information. How can we find Jermaine Johnson? Um, on Facebook, it's Jermaine Germs Johnson. And it's Germs with a Z, J-E-R-M-Z, um, it said. <laughs> and for... For Instagram, you have um, germs underscore keys. Um, phone number is 954-461-5029. Okay, cool. We will definitely be checking out um, the work that you guys have been putting in on social media. I would like to wish you guys all the best um, yes. on your endeavors for the future. And I would like to also thank you for joining us on this program. All right. Well, respect, us. respect again, guys. Yeah, and take care of yourself. Yeah, All right. You too, take care. All right. All right. Come on, bless.